In the beginning, there was nothing but a beautiful, plump, blue dot of a surface. Then there was me, and I live in this very depressing blue void of nothingness that's very, very sad. Hey, you know what else I like? I like orcs, and I'd really like to put some orcs in this blue void, but it's very empty, and I think that I'm going to have to build them a planet first. Let's do that. I would work tirelessly for years on end sculpting and creating the perfect planet for my orcs to live on using my natural disasters like earthquakes, meteors, and my ability to plant seeds and grass, obviously, to make the perfect habitable planet for my little green goblin kind of companions here, as well as all other sorts of life that will live among them. Ah, now this is a nice planet planet to colonize with our orcs, we will spawn in our very first orc. He shall be our chosen one, our king of the orcs, if you will, our emperor. Of course though, since this orc has been chosen by me, the cosmic hand, he shall be bestowed with my divine wisdom and blessings. And we shall also be giving him a new name, Gorg, or George, just depending on how you want to pronounce it, I suppose, either one's fine. Gorg and the other orcs shall live here in the swamp, it'll toughen them up, it's one hell of a place to live with all the alligators and frogs and... Uh, cobra snakes, hmm, this might not be a good idea. Nah, I'm sure it'll be fine. He'll be fine, you know, probably. You would end up forming the very first kingdom of the planet to go talk. May it rain for many moons. But you know, truly, this planet is so large and plump and ample for opportunity of other species. We should really add in some humans and elves and maybe even a few dwarves, you know, as a challenge for our orcs. I would just hate for our sweet little green babies to get bored out here. I believe we'll begin with some of the these pointy-eared freaks. I thought a perfect spot for them would be in this enchanted forest biome because elves are commonly associated with enchanted things and stuff like that. Next up we have the dwarves. Now I would end up putting the dwarves in a mushroom biome. I probably should have put them in some hills because it made sense, but I don't know. Lastly, we have humans. Side note here, humans are actually the most peaceful of all the species. Or, uh, so I've been told. Anywho, though, with a human finally added into the world, we have all four of our sentient conscious creatures, and now we shall give them a good bit of time to just grow and kind of develop their cities and, or probably villages at this point. I basically immediately noticed an issue, though. It looks like the humans and the elves are growing much faster than our orcs. This seemed extremely unfair to me, so I decided I would stunt their growth by sending a few of these alligators and other toxic and vicious creatures over to the Elves. I picked up as many as I could fit in my little cosmic fist and I threw them down right on top of those damn dirty elves, but to my surprise, they weren't eating any of the elves. They actually began living in harmony. Could it be? Could I have been wrong this entire time? Maybe it had nothing to do with the alligators. I don't really care. I'm gonna bring some trees to life and hope maybe that they try to kill the elves, which didn't happen either. After bringing the trees to life, all they really wanted to do was dance. All right, well, those aren't exactly the elf killers that I need, so let's spawn in some skeletons to maybe get the job done a little bit better than some dancing trees. Oh, do you hear that? That, my friends, is the sound of success. Now onto the dwarves. They were actually growing at a fairly steady pace on par with that of the orcs, so they weren't really, you know, outdoing them or anything like that. Nothing to really worry about. I destroyed their entire nation with lightning bolts. But Red Knight, you said they weren't a threat. Look, it's better to be safe than sorry, you know what I mean? And I mean, come on, was it even that bad? Look at this small child. He's still frolicking out in the fields, having a good time. Some might even say I done them a favor, I would say. And now finally, on to our humans. The only species that I really do think could give the orcs a run for their money and viciousness. I decided to spawn in a smorgasbord of bandits to fight the humans. I thought that it would be fitting that the downfall of the human race would be humans themselves, just as it is possibly in real life, or maybe not, we don't know yet. But I suppose now I should just leave them to their own devices and see how prosperous they can truly be after all this damage. I could basically immediately see a massive decrease in the population of the dwarves and the humans. It looks like we were successful. However, the elves, on the other hand, were still expanding exponentially, so I had to do something about that. I thought a few good old-fashioned earthquakes might do the trick, and to the surprise of no one, this seemed to be correct, and it killed many, many of the elves. 
But actually, it didn't take very long for them to begin popping back in at all. They're like cockroaches, apparently. Gotta be honest with you, though, I don't really mind as long as my orcs are the most prosperous and growing nation on the entire planet. And that seems to be the case for the most part, at least for a while. But those damn dirty elves were relentless. It's also worth mentioning that the human bandits completely wiped out the humans, meaning that the humans wiped themselves out. Not shocking. It also appears that the elves and the dwarves Dwarves are at war over some territorial disputes or something along those lines. Ah yes, the more concerned they are with killing one another, the less concerned they are with growing, meaning our orcs have a better chance of becoming the largest nation on the entire globe, and thus the global powerhouse. But there was one catch. It would appear that the orcs are now at war with the elves as well. And of course, since the orcs are our little babies, I'm going to give them a little bit of nurturing in the form of plenty of minerals such as ores and gold and everything they can make weapons out of essentially. Then I witnessed our very first skirmish with the elves. The orcs held their own and killed several elves. A little bit later on after making it closer to their village though unfortunately they were ganged up on and defeated. After witnessing the death of a few members of my favorite creation I decided that I would give the entire orc army a super power up. A divine blessing that would make them absolutely massive with the strength and power to match. With this divine blessing, it would make it much easier for them to win several battles against the elves. No one was safe from their massacre, not even the elven dancing trees. But the elves were sending in several volleys of reinforcements. It was clear to me not only would I have to upgrade my orcs, but I would have to downgrade the elves. What better debuff to bestow upon the elves than the plague itself? And make no mistake, my friends, this is actually a genuine debuff. It literally decreases everything from their speed damage, armor, their loyalty to their home faction, and even their life expectancy and fertility. And I may have dropped a few grenades on them, just for good measure, of course. Plagues, grenades, tomato, tomato. With the assistance of their cosmic deity, which is me, they actually managed to completely destroy several elven villages. Seeing the elves' futile attempts to shoot the orcs with a bow and arrow really made me feel bad for them, but unfortunately, I am not god of the elves. I am god of the orcs and I must help them conquer these swine. The war would rage on and many elven lives would be taken by our orcs, but just before they could finish the job, they ended up ending the war for whatever reason. But as the orc god, I don't make their political decisions and so, of course, I accept their decision for peace. Okay, so maybe that was a complete lie. I mean, come on, after everything the elves did, did you really think I was just going to let that happen? No, I'm going to bomb the shit out of one of their last remaining villages and turn it into a pretty, pretty pond. But for the love of God, they just would not die. They kept popping up left and right, right next to the dwarves. If they want to live, so be it, but they will not live happily. I am going to spawn in some tumorous growth flesh creatures to torment them. And so I did, of course. The fleshy, tumorous, monstrous creatures would begin spreading all across the elven lands, even though they would continuously try to stomp them out, I would continue spawning them in. And for the dwarves, I would spawn in some, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what the hell this is, but uh, let's hope it kills them. For their sins against the chosen race of the orcs, they shall be tormented for many, many moons by these fleshy beasts. This is what they get for springing back to life every time I come in and stomp them like a bunch of ants. If they don't want to die very well, they can be tormented for generations to come. Though I will say their dedication to not being completely torn apart by green eyeball monsters walking around on three legs was somewhat admirable. I also noticed that the dwarves had somehow managed to defeat all of the flesh beasts that I had spawned in on their side of the island. I suppose I'll leave them alone as they didn't exactly have anything to do with the war against the orcs. I would sit back for a few decades and just kind of watch development on the islands and eventually at one point the elves were completely wiped out by the green eyeball monsters I spawned in but you may also notice that we're having several civil wars with the dwarves and even with our orcs. I'm not exactly sure as to why I have no idea what event has sparked this civil war between our chosen race but it would appear that we do have two nations now and this would only continue to become an issue as they spread out over
over time with several different new factions emerging upon the continent. And this was becoming a real problem. They were acting more like humans. They could end up destroying themselves. I would have to make a decision. I would have to side with a kingdom. As you might imagine, I decided to side with our main kingdom, the one that's dark blue. I forgot the name and I'm too lazy to look. But anyways, I'm going to nuke all the other orcs into oblivion as well as the dwarves. Just as well, I would use cosmic rays to kill any living life forms that were left behind. Once my celestial cleansing was completed, it would be time for me to reseed the entire planet. I did notice, however, as I was reseeding many of these biomes, we ended up having some of the dwarves begin repopulating the desert. I didn't exactly mind, to be honest with you, as long as our orcs were still the dominant species, I'd suppose everything would be fine. It would be acceptable for me and I would tolerate a few dwarf kingdoms, as long as they don't declare war against my favorites here. And obviously, of course, as long as we don't have any more uprisings that sprout. Bit of a spoiler alert though, that is exactly what ended up happening. Several times over, we actually had many civil wars going on in the orcish kingdom. Kingdom, which was a bit of a problem, I would have to think of a proper punishment for these damn rebellions as well as the damn dwarves for whatever reason, I'm sure they deserve it either way. But the punishment I dish out must be bad enough that it is remembered for all time. To begin, I would need to try and wall off my chosen civilization, the Dark Blue Kingdom that I still don't remember the name for. I would use some massive mountains to try and encompass them away from all of the other kingdoms. And the idea being that this should hopefully completely protect them from my wrath that I'll be dishing out. For it is time for a new plague, one that shall infect the entire world. The zombie virus, and I am going to be dropping it on every single kingdom and civilization that is outside these mountainous walls. They must know of my wrath. They must fear me, and they must most importantly respect my chosen people. For if they do not, they will be eaten by their own kind. Historians and scholars shall write about my vicious work that I've unleashed across the globe here today for many, many years. Surely this will be enough to prevent them from having any more uprisings, right? Well, I suppose only time will tell, but for the current uprisings, those kingdoms actually weren't completely destroyed by the zombies, so I would have to take some more drastic measures to ensure that I have fully taken them out. My actions actually caused several different ravines to open up in the large mountainous barrier that I had created, so my favorite orcs were actually spilling out and beginning to repopulate the beaches of the uh, irradiated landscape. I mean, what can I say? Those orcs are industrious. Now you see why they are my favorite. I felt that it was about time that I started reseeding the world once more, but unfortunately as I was doing so, we had more and more uprisings within the Orc Kingdom. I'm beginning to think that there is no solution to this little problem and maybe I should just cleanse the world. Now that is much better. You know, I think I'm sick of being the god of orcs. Maybe I'll just be the god of chickens, or more specifically, this chicken right here in particular. Hello, little one. I'm your one and only friend, your deity, as it were. Do you want to worship me, perhaps? Well, that's okay. At least you're not waging war against your fellow chickens, or literally anything else, I guess. This is much easier. 